Professor Peter Singer, uh, it's great to have you here at the 2017 Crawford Leadership Forum. And I wanted to just ask you a few questions about your uh, talk today around the future of democracy. So uh, let's just get to the point, the big question. What's the future for representative uh, democracy uh, around the world? I think representative democracy still has a future because we haven't found a better system of government. But uh, there are lots of dangers that are threatening it. There are lots of authoritarian leaders in Hungary, in Poland, in Turkey, and arguably possibly now in the United States as well, that are trying to essentially consolidate power and remove a lot of the important elements of democracy. And uh, if we want to preserve that, the best elements of democracy, what do you think is the, are the essential ingredients? I think it's really important to preserve a lively and informed discussion of policy issues. And part of the problem, of course, is that this discussion has been polluted, you could say, by uh, social media and particular uh, websites that pay no regard for the accuracy of what they're saying. And ordinary people are finding it hard to distinguish sometimes those sources from the reputable sources. The, uh, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, let's say here uh, in the US, um, maybe the New York Times and the Washington Post, the places that check their facts and do it properly. And, and it's a threat that people are getting confused by the planting of, of false information and stories. Uh, and because of social media, they see more of that that's self-selected that they don't really even get a, a properly balanced perspective of what else is being said. So what do you see as the future between then, what I would say, the traditional mass media, the New York Times, and social media, which has now emerged very disruptively over the last 10 years? I really hope that the traditional mass media, that is, as I said, the good ones, the ones that check their facts, um, do survive. And some of them, I've noticed, are moving almost from a standard business model, because they've lost a lot of advertising revenue, to a, a not-for-profit model. They're appealing to their readers to support them because they are important to democracy and so they're asking for charitable donations and maybe that's what we have to do. Maybe those of us who think that this is important have to recognize that these, place, these media need to survive and need to be given credibility and authority. It's certainly true. In 2017, I've started subscribing to, uh, to newspapers and media around the world because I've, I'm craving that quality content. So I think that's what you have to do and if they're going to survive, more people are going to have to do that. Um, what do you see as being the future of political parties? I don't think we're getting rid of political parties. Um, we might be getting more of them. Um, that depends partly on the voting system. Small parties don't have much of a future in a first-past-the-post system like the United States. But uh, in Australia, especially in the Senate, they, they do have a future. Um, possibly they can get representatives into the lower house, as in the Greens. So. Um, I think, I think political parties are, are still here for the foreseeable future, though. And do you think the fragmentation of political parties, is that good for representative democracy, or does it impede it based on having our systems sort of seem to be built for parties of a couple rather than 15? Yes, but I mean, it's true that it, it makes things more difficult to function. Um, it might, you have to build coalitions sometimes. But of course, the Europeans have been doing that for a long time with their proportional representation. Uh, in many countries, it's just accepted that they have to build co coalitions, that no party will get a, a majority in its own right. And, and they've learned to work that. So uh, I'm not too worried about the fact that we're getting more small parties and that they're getting some share of power. I do think in a way that's, that's good for representing a wider range of viewpoints. And what's your recommendation to the rest of the world about Australia's not quite but uh, relatively unique system of mandatory voting? I've been telling my American friends that they could save a lot of time and energy if they could get uh, mandatory voting because they spend so much time in just trying to get the vote out and trying to work out which sections of the public are likely to favour their candidate and then they try to get them to come to the polls. Uh, and yet still you have quite low rates of, of voting, which I think do delegitimize the system to some extent. No candidate can say a majority of Americans voted for me. So um, I wish that more people were aware of the advantages of, of mandatory voting in terms of getting a very high turnout and getting people to express their views. Thank you very much. Great to have you back in Canberra. Hope to see you here Thank again you. soon. It's been good to be Cheers. here.